before going into any kind of root canal therapy, your radiographs, your pre-operative pre radiographs are extremely, extremely, extremely important because it gives you a glimpse of what you can expect in your root canal therapy. And it is uh, like maybe you will have a pulp stone or it might have a, a calcifications or you will have an open apex or you can have a multiple canals or your curve, you will, you will have a uh, curved canals. So this all can be done with your pre-op x-ray and you, your pre-op x-ray can also save you sometimes. Uh, sometimes we can say, okay, just, this is just an anterior tooth. I will do it in 15 minutes. We'll say to the patient, okay, this is an anterior tooth. 15 minutes, we will complete. The moment you open the tooth and you'll, you'll try doing your uh, uh, working length and you will feel that it is not going and then you take an x-ray and you will land up knowing it's calcified and it will take one and a half hour. And now what will the patient think? Okay, madam took one and a half hour just for a simple tooth. So this gives a bad opinion to the patient you know, who came for 15 minutes treatment and who is going undergoing a one hour, 15 minutes treatment, right? So it will save you if you see the if you see your radiograph before and you judge that, okay, this is a calcified canal. Okay, it will take this much of time. And, the, uh, and this is like, it involves so much of uh, your time and my time. If you explain everything to the patient, patient will understand that. So your rate, Pre-op radiographs will save you and also will guide you. So your pre-operative radiographs are extremely, extremely important. Never ever touch a root can start your root canal therapy without a radiograph. No, never. First, I'll keep the rubber dam and then I'll take an X-ray while trying uh, working length. No, first pre-operative radiograph is extremely important. Without taking your pre-operative radiographs, never ever touch a case. If you see this study, it also says that radiographic examination is an indispensable agent in endodontics, especially for diagnosis, treatment, and follow-up after the endodontic therapy. So the first choice of imaging method in endodontics and clinical practice is your radiograph. Okay, so never ever neglect your pre-operative radiograph that is extremely important, right? And second, so initially we saw the radiograph. Now we want to start our treatment. So this is my first case. How do I start? I have extreme fear of operating any kind of teeth. First, whenever you're having that fear to start a root canal therapy, then just draw on it. Draw on the teeth with your marker. Take a marker and draw on your teeth. Draw two horizontal lines like this and two vertical lines and like a bingo, okay? So this is at the center you can see strike a bingo and then go with a bar okay and make sure you always your canals are having a straight line axis okay your straight line axis is very very important so that's how you'll go draw on a teeth if, if it's a if it's a premolar then keep a keep a dot on the center if it's a if it is a molar then make sure you're dra drawing a triangle towards your mesial side that's how if you're initially starting, this is my first case, then you just start drawing on the teeth. After two or three cases, you will be easily going at what point you can uh, start your bar, right? And okay, still I'm having a fear, maybe I, I'll touch my pulpal floor, maybe I'll, I'll do perforate. Then take a bar, whatever bar you're using. So as I said, your endo axis bar is 10 centimeters of working area. So what you'll do, so we know that enamel at the cusp, you'll have 2.5 to 3 and your dentin thickness is 3 to 3.5. So for safety or sight, measure half of the bar length. Keep a mark with a permanent marker so that you will never, whenever you're doing your axis cavity, you're never going beyond that mark. So that will save you that you are only entering into the pulp uh, pulpal roof but not touching your pulpal floor so make a half at the bar and then mark it and then go ahead okay no ma'am still i'm having a fear then what you do is whenever you're taking a pre-operative radiograph mark on the radiograph and mark the same marking on your bar and then go ahead after going here maybe you'll just feel the drop Immediately change your bar to endo Z bar so that it, as it is having a non-cutting tip, it will never touch your floors. It will just remove this part. So the moment you touch, go here, 
and you will change the bar and then this part of your uh, roof is removed right so if you see <clears throat> ma'am there is a round bar what can we do the moment you go here as i have said you will feel the drop remove the bar and go for go for your endo z bar or any other bar if not i'll go with this round kind of bars what happens is accidentally without knowing you'll think that there is still there is a because your floor also will be harder enough you will think it as a roof and you will be still going ahead so better avoid round bars where you cannot mark initially so if you, if it is a endo z bar or a endo axis bar you can easily mark on the bar and you can go ahead with the bar so for me yes these round axis bars are big no okay you can just go with your simple endo z bar and an endo axis bar they would do miracles for you still you have a fear then use your ultrasonics those ultrasonics can be attached to your normal ultrasonic scaler so you can just use your ultrasonics okay the moment you feel the drop remove the bar that's it you have entered the pulp don't don't think that i have to remove everything with this zero bar no you will go beyond because it's a hollow space right you will not have a control where you are placing your bar the moment you feel the drop you will you because it has already dropped now you will go touch the floor so the moment you felt the drop just remove the bar and go ahead with your uh, endo z bar and next now we have done the axis opening we have removed everything with your endo z bar now we have extended the cavity also start seeing first okay see your pulpal floor because your pulpal floor will give you extreme amount of details that it is hidden okay if you are having a doubt while doing an uh, axis opening then keep the bar in place as as here you can see keep the bar in place and take a radiograph then you will know whether you have entered the pulp chamber or not also okay and the moment you are in the pulp now remove everything now no more bars inside the cavity okay once you have deroofed the pulp and you have removed the pulpal contents no more using your aerotor your aerotor's job is done okay now you will see the untouched pulpal floor this is your pulpal floor okay this was a this was a case failed root canal therapy the patient was still feeling the pain this is an upper molar and everything was filled the moment i just i just opened it and i have seen i could see an mb2 here very clearly even without even with my naked eye i could see so it is very important for you to explore your pulpal can you hear me yes dr amika we can hear you yeah so the moment if you see your pulpal floor we can directly see your see your canals there this is where your canal starts so never ever use your bar where the canal starts this is where your rotary or your hand fell should come in so never use your bar beyond your roof this is all floor it has to be as untouched as possible never ever touch your floor of the pulpal cavity right so i have seen this and then we just went and did uh, your biomechanical preparation and done so make sure you are exploring all the pulpal cavity and looking around where possibly the canals are and sometimes the moment you open you will see the bleed even though if the ca cavity is having if you see here even, even though if the cavity is having a big pulp stone it starts bleeding that's where you will know your canals are so never search beyond this point somewhere else so your teeth will be start your teeth will definitely start speaking to you the moment you love them okay the moment you open the canals you will see this bleeding points okay the moment you see the bleeding points stop there and just go with your dj16 and then start exploring the canals uh, the beauty of dj16 is it even if you are having a hard dentin it will not go beyond if it, even if there is a pulpal stone and you keep searching with your dj16 it will go inside that's how you will know that okay there is a canal here so this is a mandibular molar where i thought okay i'll be having three canals because uh, because my dentinal map is showing one distal canal here and it is guiding me here and here the moment i started exploring with my explorer i could see there is one more canal here which is my mid mesial canal 
and there is a dentinal map also guiding me that yes there is a canal here initially it guided here and you can see this black gray lines those gray lines are nothing but your dentinal map follow your dentinal map and it will show you where all the canals possibly you can search for so this is the lower molar where initially i could see a bleeding point and then removed this pulp stone and then i could see a dentinal map clearly showing me the root see here i i cannot see any gray area because there is nothing here there is no canal here wherever the canals are during the development of the pulp the blood flows into these canals right that's the reason why all the blood flowing areas will be gray in color so that it will guide you that here supposed to be a canal so that's where you'll know that following your dentinal map will show you how many canals there are and where possible you can search for a canal and as i said start exploring with your explorer so if if i keep an explorer on a dentin no you cannot feel any 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 down or you know you can you cannot feel any uh, pull inside the moment if you are inside your pulpal uh, pulpal cavity even if you are having a having a pulp stone you will still feel a drop with your explorer so start knowing the difference between your i think here you have to know the difference between while you are hitting your dentin and while you are hitting your pulpal floor you have to know the difference right the moment if you are in the pulpal floor it will go inside if you are hitting the dentin it will not go inside so that's where you have to stop and think that it is dentin but not your pulpal floor and as i have already said your dentinal map so in this case also i have removed the entire caries i have deroofed the entire completely and made sure that i'm having a straight line axis where i can see all my canals okay so the moment i can see all my canals i can shape them well right and i all i can also fill them good so this is how your dentinal map that will guide you so here the here if you see there is a distal canal which is guiding you yes there is one root and here it is showing you two different ways which says that you have a mesobuccal canal and mesolingual canal and there is nothing else here in between if you see the first case you you saw something gray grayish area also but here you cannot see any gray area that is present the gray area is towards your mesobuccal and towards your me mesolingual and towards your distal so I, now i'm not going to go there and search whether i'm having any excess uh, extra canal or i'm having any mid mesial canal here no i won't search because it is so clear that yes there are only two canals and one straight distal canal that's it okay so every time make sure you are following your dentinal map your pre op x rays and your dentinal map the moment you see this your endo will be as beautiful as possible right and yeah even here even for the premolar madam do we see the do we see the same thing in the premolar also yes you will see your dentinal maps even in your premolars also see here is a canal and it is guiding me telling me yes this is where you can search a canal so i'll straightly go and search a canal see even your premolars will guide you even your molars will guide you with the dentinal maps so never miss your dentinal maps okay remove the entire caries make sure you are deroofing the entire canal and then have a straight line axis and then go ahead this is one more uh, case where this was a cavity filled with your like uh, there is a, a gingival polyp i have removed it the moment i deroofed i just deroofed and removed the caries this is what i can see it is just untouched cavity or an untouched floor okay the moment i deroofed it i could see this i could see three canals it is it is self explanatory and and it is guiding me that here is a canal with a grayish area here and here one more canal and there is one more canal here so i don't search again removing this dentin and check whether there is a canal here no it is already guided and telling you this is the place where you have to search the canal if there was a canal here this gray area would have been involved here also so this gray grayish areas which are telling is your dentinal map and it will guide you the moment you remove your caries and deroof you will be able to see this dentinal map and you can directly go ahead and do your uh, root canal therapy so this was a c shape again i have kept nothing no efforts were kept here i just removed my caries i just deroofed the pulp and i could see the canals that's it
no cbct was also done for this case and th this is like one more case this is maxillary molar uh, so maxillary first molar so the moment i removed the entire caries i could see only two canals there is no third canal but in x ray i could see three canals i was still thinking whether case was like whether this tooth is having only two canals or where did i miss the canal then if i see properly my dentinal map is also showing both the two canals here only so the moment i st I, I went inside and checked the second canal is at the middle third it is dividing into two so i didn't go ahead and search here or here because my dentinal map is very clearly saying you cannot find any canals here or here the grayish area is only here and only here sorry so i straightly went inside and my and my pre op x ray is telling yes you have three roots so it is very clear from my pre op that i'm having three roots and i will have three canals but my dentinal map is saying there are only two two canal orifices so i went inside and i checked here then i could see two canals inside my cavity this is the axis cavity and this is where the primary canal has opened and inside the primary canal i could see my distobuccal and mesobuccal canals so it it has been separated at the middle third so whenever you are having these kind of cases don't go ahead and search somewhere else i, I think uh, maybe distal side i'll have a distal canal no just uh, be patient take one more x ray and keep your uh, and keep your eye on your dentinal map it will guide you and we all has this fantasy of making you know extremely smaller conservative uh, axis cavity because if you make a conservative axis cavity like you're great uh, because we have we all have that enthusiasm that we have to make as 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 little as possible our cavity should be as small as possible so let me tell you whether you make a small cavity or a big cavity your pulpal space is a hollow space so you have to deal of it even if you make a very ultra conservative cavity still the hollow it, it is like a room you have a floor you have a roof and your entire space is hollow so you cannot give any strength make making making your um, extremely ultra conservative cavities especially when you are starting your root canal therapies like you are this is how maybe from tomorrow i'm starting my who are the initial practitioners no never try making an extremely smaller canals i'll show you what you'll end up in making an extremely smaller axis cavities so this is one more so these kind of cavities only will do for intentional root canals where our prosthodontist comes and says okay please do an intentional root canal therapy for this uh, abutment teeth because we need strength so the only at that point of time we will make a conservative cavity because making a big cavity might decrease the strength of the tooth as it's an abutment we want the strength so in only in those cases we try to make a very conservative cavities right not in all the cases most of the cases are caries cases right most of our endo endo cases are related with caries and the moment you open the caries your tooth structure is gone already now there is nothing else you can save by doing an ultra conservative axis cavities so whenever most of our axis cavities are due to caries only you will go ahead like these kind of cavities when you are especially doing an intentional root canals but never else okay so this is one more case even here also we are directly went into only to the distal canal those also through the crown okay initially i measured how much the crown was and then directly went inside the distal canal and then operated it